Well, Charlotte Flair's pissed off. Landing too good. I, I feel bad for you. Three weeks in a row, get your butt whipped. Hey guys, this is the AW here, Aaron Warder, on the, his latest SmackDown channel, the latest SmackDown SmackDown review. So SmackDown just ended. I know some of you are gonna go watch Rampage. I'll go watch Rampage after his review is up. But yeah, SmackDown just ended, and I'm sure Flair's pissed off. Uh, let's go. Let's go talk about SmackDown, shall we? I'm gonna try to make this a short video. My last video reviewing was about 18 to 20 minutes. I want to make this shorter, but let's get on to it. So let's talk about what just happened. So as you know, Charlotte and Wanda Rousey we had a beat the clock challenge on making her pull and tap out, right? Wanda has Shotzi and Charlotte had Aaliyah. So let's just get to it. You know they have a match at WrestleMania Backlash and that for the SmackDown Women's title. Whoever, the only way to win the match is by making your pull and say, I quit. In this match, we had Shotzi and Wanda, so Wanda started out first. In this match, while Charlotte Flair was waiting, was waiting by the um, sitting down in the chair near the announcement table, watching the match. This match, Shotzi was running around, you know, trying to like run away from Wanda, but Wanda got to her. Shotzi had no offense, no offense at all. She didn't even land anything. When she tried, Wanda always blocked it. Wanda pushed her that, that suplex, and then pushed her in that ankle lock, and Shotzi taps out at a minute 41. So, Charlotte, it's Charlotte's turn. She cuts a little small promo, and Aaliyah comes out. Now, she has to have, she has to be a minute and 41 seconds to make Aaliyah tap out or say, I quit in a minute 41. So, Aaliyah comes out. Aaliyah gets a little bit of offense to Charlotte. And about the 30 second mark, around the 30, 25 to 30 second mark, Charlotte's going to put on Aaliyah into the figure eight. But Aaliyah kicked her and started fell out of the ring. And about, you know, 20 to 15 second mark, she gets back in. And Aaliyah didn't get up or anything. She just she just laid there and just let Charlotte put her to figure. I didn't like that. But, but uh, whatever. But it is what it is. And Charlotte put her to figure. And unfortunately, time expired and she lost. She lost, right? She lost. Uh, beat the clock challenge. And you see, like, um. You know, this is Rousey, and you see and <laughs> Rousey laughing at Charlotte Flair. She grinned, she, um, she went like, oh, oh. <laughs> it's a Charlotte. And you see her um, walking, um, high five in the crowd. This is actually a tape show in the UK, by the way. And the thing is, after this match, after this match, Charlotte Flair was pissed and she took a frustration on Drew Gulak, who was the bell keep for this show. And she beat the hell out of Drew Gulak. Drew Gulak goes in the ring, rolls himself in the ring. Bell picks up the, the no, no, Charlotte picks up the bell, hits it with, you know, the, the, the thing. And then she goes in the ring with the bell and hits Drew Gulak in the back of the neck with the, the bell, the wing bell. And that's the show end. Yeah, I know, but I know that's the ending of the show. But let's, let's, yeah. But let's get to the beginning. So the beginning was a steel cage match between Sami Zayn and Drew McIntyre. If you know, Sami Zayn has been ducking Drew McIntyre the past three weeks, either going through the crowd, and he luckily got through the crowd and ducked his match to Lumberjack. Of but now he couldn't go anywhere. Steel cage match. You can't go anywhere. The only way to win this match is through the cage or get pinned. This match is actually very good. There was times where you think Sami Zayn would win. Would win. But no. No. Drew got... Sami even hit his finish with a Luva kick. And you would think he'd win there. But no. Drew McIntyre got to win here. There was a superplex off the cage where Sami tried to escape. And then... Drew hits him to Claymore, gets the win, and yeah, climbs up the cage, has a sword, Angela, and pulls his little crowd. Now, what does this mean? Well, this is, it looks like the thing with Sammy has ended, and now we got Drew moving on. So let's go to what fast forward that Drew gets involved in with. The, the the top of the hour at 9 p.m. Eastern. We got the you know, supposedly the tag team unifications contract signing between Usos and RK Bro 
Fortunately, this didn't get ha this didn't get sell because of the promos back and forth. Randy Orton called when the Uso the right hand woman, the, the big dog's right hand man, and he called the other Uso the, the bitch, and that's pissed piss off. Then a fight broke out. Uh, the table broke out. The, the tables went fly, they went flying. The chairs went flying, and they started to you know have a brawl. Arcade Bowl got the upper hand, and all of a sudden, Roman Reigns' music hits, and that's where the big dog was coming. So Arcade Bowl got distracted, and the Usos got the upper hand on the distra distracted Arcade Bro, and they started beating him up. Roman Reigns involved, beats up, and takes the, the contract and puts in Riddle's face, and looks like what I was like, no, I guess no, no unification tag team title match. It's happy. And then you hear Drew McIntyre's music hits. Drew McIntyre clears out the Usos. Comes in the ring and confronts Roman, and a brawl breaks up between the two. Drew manages to do overhead of belly suplex to Roman, and Roman escapes with the Usos, and RK Bro stands side by side by Drew McIntyre. Now, what does this mean? Well, Heyman backstage goes up to Pierce and said, because the contract signing never happened, so that match is not official. But Heyman has suggested making a six man tag team match at WrestleMania Backlash to Usos so in Roman, the bloodline. Versus RK Bro and Drew McIntyre. And Pierce says, I can't do that. I'm not allowed. And Amy is like, I'm, I'm going to take this up to management. Your job could be on the line. Or you, you, the fighters are going to this. But unfortunately, this match has become official. I think I've seen it somewhere. It is official. This match is going to happen at WrestleMania Backlash. The Usos and Roman Reigns, the Bloodline versus RK Bro. Drew McIntyre. I don't know if all the titles are on the line. I'm not 100 percent sure. But yeah, so I got the main, the main, I guess the main stuff out of the way, and uh, the 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 top segment out of the way. I guess. Okay. So let's get to the meat of the show. Very quick. Corbin comes out with his happy show, whatever, and his guest apparently is the Andre the Giant Bell Trophy that Matt Cup's mom won. But he remembered Corbin stole it yesterday. Okay, last week. Moss, Moss sneaks in, has a has a sledgehammer, misses Corbin, but gets the upper hand, beats up Corbin, punches, couple punches, throws him in the ring post, and yeah, and, get, and gets back his Andre the Giant trophy. Okay. Couple promos. You see Gunther and Lewis. Um, you know, do their we say basically respect will be taken. Okay. Uh, next, before we get to the IC title match, no, should we? We got Raquel Gonzalez making her debut, or Raquel Rodriguez making her debut. She was backstage, she says she's nervous, she smiled. It's weird, it still doesn't sound like her, but she comes out. She has a match with somebody who, um, somebody who claims that it's her debut and wants to take advantage to that person that her opponent, I forget her name. Snuck attacker, whatever. What happened was, Raquel Gonzalez managed to take, had most of the offense, but that actually her opponent did get some offense in. Raquel Gonzalez did her classic moves, and the el the springing elbow off the top rope. And then um, her, her opponent tried to go for a kick, and Raquel Gonzalez caught her and gave her a finisher. Boom. Here's Raquel Gonzalez walking, and... Here, here's posting for first win on SmackDown. I say Raquel Gonzalez, I mean Raquel Rodriguez. I'm sorry, but yeah. Let's get to the IC title match. Shanky versus Ricochet. This match is actually not bad. Shanky managed to get a lot of offense in. A big guy, of course he has to get a lot of offense. Pound like this, he has to use his strength. But Ricochet in the end got the win here. Uh... With the wool, like Shanky had them over the shoulders, and Ricochet just wool, had a wool up and pinned, pinned them, and to retain uh, the title, and still in a call champion. And the thing after his match, Shanky, it looked like he didn't. It looked like Shanky in a gender something's there is happening. It looks like a dysfunction between the two. It's like Shanky just basically walked away from gender. Okay, so let's get. I know I don't have any pictures for this, so let's get to the the, the singles match between Naomi and Shayna Baszler. 
Is it Shayna Baszler? Yeah, Naomi and Shayna Baszler. This match sucked. Naomi got the win, but this match really sucked. It's like a minute and a half, two minutes at most, but it sucked. The story at the end of the match is that um, Shayna and Nat- Natty attacked Naomi. Sasha Banks got involved to defend her friend, but us, uh, Sasha knocked uh, Natalia out of the ring. She was going to go t- baseball slide Natalia when Natty caught her legs and she put in a sharpshooter over the ropes. Um, over the ropes. And Naomi, uh, Naomi's going to go try to break that up, but Shane Baser caught her and put in her uh, a signature slam. I forgot what it's called. And yeah, we made her watch. And yeah. And I made her watch um, Shayna Baszler like, do her uh, break her arm move, you know. And she just plants her arm like this and she steps on it like that. Hard, hard yeah. Uh, where do we go from here? We got the Lacey Evans stuff. She cuts another fantastic poem detailing her life, talking about her, how in her Marine service at her graduation that her father wasn't there. I really like this direction for Lacey Evans, making us... Make us um, emphasize her, her character instead of sassy Southern Belle. I really like this. I agree with some people. This is what she should have done. This is people will get behind will get behind this character. I really like this, Lacey Evans. I don't know what it means in the long term, but I really like this. It's chapter four. Now we get to the the new day versus um, Seamus and Ridge Holland. They're backstage. They put flyers because um, Bush is nowhere to be seen. Pete Dunn, Butch, whatever. So they put flyers of uh, Butch, Pete Dunn all over. And there's a couple memes and pictures on the internet going around. Well, yeah, okay. And um, they joke around it because they all put the flyers apparently in the same place. So Rich Hall had a match with Xavier Woods. Solid match. Rich Hall is getting better. Solid match. Xavier Woods gets the win. And there's before before match, there's a promo called Shea, where Xavier calls um, Seamus shaking, shaking Seamus. That got to Seamus' head, obviously. Rich Holland did, did lose, did lose, but Sheamus challenged Kofi to a match. This is where Sheamus, in return, got to win over Kofi. But after that, it's, it's what after that that matters. Uh, Sheamus and um, Rich Holland beat up the New Day, and they put Rich Holland put Xavier through the table. So yeah, I think I said everything I needed to say. Uh, so next week of back- Backlash, we're getting. Six men tag, Drew and RK Bro versus the Bloodline. Looks like it's happening. And and I believe there's another match. This next week match is having the New Day, Xavier and Kofi versus Sheamus and Rich Hall in a tables match. Yeah. That's basically everything I said. I said the main the main event beginning of the show. And it's the main in the main story during the middle of the show. So like, share, subscribe, comment below. Tell me what you guys think. And yeah, take care guys.